Hey everyone, welcome to a new video where we are going to show you how to batch export in Reaper. Batch exporting is incredibly intuitive and very easy to do in Reaper. And it actually gives a lot of great options for working in game audio to have a dynamic and simple workflow. A lot of other DAWs don't have the functionality to do batch exporting and Reaper has a lot of different options to do so. So right here we have two different categories of sounds. We have some, basically just some gore sounds. We have some gut spilling sounds. And we have some limb tearing sounds. They're both fairly similar, but in our imaginary game that we're creating, we want to export each individual layer on their own and also have random variation of the sounds. And also we want to make sure that these are tied to the right animation. So for this one we have a gut spilling animation and this is the sound that we made for it. And here we have some limbs being torn off. So we want to make sure that it's also synced to the proper animations based off of the sounds that we created. And then we also have three layers for each of these. We have the crackle sound, the blood sound, and a splash sound. And then we have two versions of each of these sounds for random variation purposes. So this seems like a lot to export, right? You would think that you have to export each individual layer, solo it, and then hit render on each individual region, right? Well, actually, no, we can make this a lot simpler than that. We can go to File, we can go to Render, we can choose our directory. I'm gonna go to my desktop and I'm going to export to course material. Hit OK. And there's an interesting thing called wildcards, which lets us select different files based off of the conditions of the region and the track name. So I can go in here and I can type in dollar sign region. You can actually see the render output, so it says region 01. But really, you want to go to source and then hit selected media items. And now it says gut spill as our region name. Then after that, let's do an underscore and type in dollar sign track. So now when we select on different media items, it will actually specify based off of which region it's under and which track it's on. So even better than this, we can highlight all of these and now it will export 12 media items in their own respective names. So let's go ahead and render these. And let's show an explorer. Would you look at that? We have all of our sounds and they're also named and numbered properly. So whenever we are going to put these into F mod or Wise or whatever we're using for our integration, we can simply click and drag these into each of our multi-instrument container or random container, depending on which integration we're using. And we can also separate these by the prefix of the name limb tear or gut spill. This is incredibly useful when we have a large session with thousands of sounds, because if we want to make it changes to a bunch of sounds at once, we can simply highlight the sounds that we want to re-export and do so accordingly. The only issue with this is that if you're doing parent tracking, so if I have a track up here and I add effects to this specifically, and I cut out the lows here, and I export these. I believe it will not make the proper changes to the sounds. Yeah, it has the full sound. So it actually only accepts the effects chain from the track that you're writing from. That's one of the only issues with it. It's very great otherwise. I guess if you're gonna be working with this, you have to make sure that you have all of your effects on the tracks of what you're working with. It also does not work with any effects send, so if you're using reverbs on a separate send to save your CPU a little bit of work, then it will also unfortunately not take your reverb sends. So anyways, I hope this was helpful for you all. There's a ton of different options for rendering your sounds. You can just click your wildcards here and see all of the different options that we have for our wildcards and batch exporting. You can take the time signature, the file number, the note, the year, the month that the sound was made. There's so many different areas that we can use. And computer too, you can write, you know, whoever made it, depending on what your workflow is in a studio environment. 
So all very useful stuff. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We are posting videos every week. So if you're looking for some more awesome sound design videos, be sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for more. And if you're looking for more places to follow Blip Sounds, come check us out on Twitter at Blip Sounds, and also check out the Discord server in the description below. We're about to hit that 600 mark, so maybe you'll be number 600 if you join. Anyways, we really appreciate you guys watching this and hope to see you all around. Thanks for watching.